The Zachary Taylor Chronicles. On last week's show... The Mexican War. Two years of ruthless fighting and conflict. Murder. Deception. The very display of the corruption and incompetence of man. Some may choose to appreciate the courage and power that emerges in men during these hard times. Yet, as Winston Churchill said, when you're winning a war, almost everything that happens can be claimed to be right and wise. February 23, 1847. Buena Vista, Mexico. General Zachary Taylor held the line against the attacking Mexicans. Two days without resupply. Two days without food or water. Two days without relief. His entire army was pinned. Death loomed above their heads like a black cloud. Commander Taylor, they're closing in fast. Our left flank's been compromised. The formation won't hold much longer. What are we gonna do? Sir, Commander. We wait. Taylor remained and his men prayed. Yet no one, not even God, replied to their plea for help. American men fell down in every direction like stones. Lord, why have you abandoned me at a time like this? Why have you abandoned the country of liberty and justice? Taylor was desperate. In his last plea for help, he called out to Damien, the son of Satan. Damien, I give you my soul if we emerge victorious. I give you my soul if we win. A heavy request, dangerous, but required. You shall win the war, but at a heavy price. Then grant me my wish. Zachary Taylor gave away his soul to win the battle. Yet, he never fulfilled his part of the bargain. Descent into hell within a year. March 4th, 1849, Tallahassee, Florida. Despite convincing himself that it was all a vision, Taylor could not help but feel superstitious. His inauguration was a day after the anniversary of the Battle of Buena Vista. He called for a supernatural team of bodyguards. They would protect him on his journey from Florida. Mr. Taylor! President. President Taylor, my name's Robert Miller and I'll be your guide for this journey. When I said inconspicuous bodyguards, I didn't mean midgets. When I was told to escort a man who was afraid of demons, I didn't expect a war hero from the Mexican War! Alright, you've made your point. But tell me, why are you so short? People don't give me a second glance. I look harmless. It would seem I'll be the last person to escort the president to the White House. <laughs> with good reason. You may not have to agree with me, Mr. Taylor. President! And why are you the only one here? The plan is I escort you through the seven states. Each state will be accompanied by a new member of the team. They won't stay for the entire journey. However, I will. You wouldn't say everyone in your team is, um, like you. They are! That's how we stay hidden. Well, that's just perfect. Two-foot bodyguards taking me to Washington. Does this seem like a picnic to you? Very funny, Mr. Taylor. Now who are you trying to avoid? Please refrain your laughter, Mr. Miller. It's, uh, Damien. The son of Satan. This is no laughing matter. If we were to make it there safe, we need to go through the churches. But if I may ask, why did you deal with him? It was sacrifice. It was for my country. What was the sacrifice? I'm sorry, did I order a psychologist? Let's get moving now. And it is there they started their journey of seven days. Things were very quiet as the pair moved into Georgia. Zachary Taylor was beginning to doubt his memory. But in the back of his head, he still feared the worst. Miller, do you think it was all in my head? That he wasn't real? If you saw him and dealt with him, he must be real. Let's hope you're wrong. How far away is this Episcopalian church? And where's your friend? I see him coming right now. His name's Ivan. General Zachary Taylor, what an honor to meet you. I guess I better get used to meeting new people. I knew it was you a mile away. Your face has the radiance of a true, honest, and humble man. Yet your eyes, your eyes seem quite the opposite. 
the Watch out! The Mexicans. What the What the hell are they doing in Florida? They're not Mexicans. They don't even look human. The undead army of Damien is attacking us. I don't even have a weapon. Doesn't make a difference. We need to get to the closest church now. There's a Roman Catholic one right around the corner. But that's not my church. It doesn't matter. All churches are the house of God, right? The group dashed down the road, which was eerily deserted of all life. Oh, my leg! Hold on! Wait for me! Ivan, what's wrong? Just keep moving, goddammit! I beg of you! Please, wait for me! Ivan! Ivan's- Dead. And if we'd stayed there to help him, we would all be dead. He gave his life for his country. He wasn't even from here! That doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what we do now. If it is protection you seek from the creatures of the underworld, you should wash your face in holy water. Where did you come from? And tell me why I should believe you. A soul searching for redemption isn't hard to spot. But beware. The effect of the holy water only lasts so long. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor and Robert exited the church around midnight to set off for South Carolina. As the old woman had promised, they were unharmed and undetected. They safely reached their destination, where a curious man was waiting for them. Here's our guide for this state. A Negro? You do know they attract a lot of attention, right? Especially if they're not bound. The name's Barrick, Mr. Taylor. It's a pleasure to meet your acquaintance, sir. I can't... I can't help but notice you're... You're missing both your legs. Robert, what kind of joke is this? From the day I escaped, my legs were shackled, so I cut them off. Freedom through sacrifice. I believe you're familiar with that concept, Mr. Taylor. I am a little too much, but I don't have time to chit-chat. Let's get going. The group went along a dried-up riverbed. Taylor was amazed and somewhat amused by Barack's ability to walk on his hands. But was it really worth the sacrifice? They walked until they reached a cave along the mountainside. Now let me show you my pride and joy. The Underground Railroad. Taylor could have never imagined that there was an actual railroad built underneath the mountains of South Carolina. It was bustling with runaway slaves, yet the group wasn't very distinguishable. The public has no idea about this. And we hope it stays that way. Think about the revenue this would generate. Mr. Taylor, this system was meant to liberate, not captivate. As you wish. They traveled overnight. Barack dropped them off as far as he could before turning around and leaving. They were in North Carolina now and heading north. That one was a real showpiece over there. No legs in the fact that he's working with you. Who's coming now? His name is Frank and he'll certainly be your type. Do you feel that? It just got colder and the wind is picking up. Robert! The holy water! It's losing its power! Come on, let's walk faster. Gray clouds rolled in like grim reapers. Rain poured down like a bad omen. The pair walked for about an hour before they were stopped. General Zachary Taylor, you have given your soul to save yourself. You left a fellow human to die in selfish greed. Now, you continue to the capital, blissfully unaware of your fate. You will be stopped. No. What I did was for my country. A selfless act. If my country needs me, I will do everything in my power to stay alive. Rudimentary creature of blood and flesh. You are powered by confidence born of ignorance. I will be the vanguard of your destruction. General Zachary Taylor, I will protect you! That's Frank! What is he doing? We don't have time to find out. Move! Let's get out of here! For liberty and justice for all, the Republic shall live, fueled by the blood of our enemies. Vive la France! Vive l'état uni! 
Bedtime. Zachary Taylor and Robert made it safely away, but Frank died. His death glorified act of dignity, a man truly worth his principles. Damien did not pursue them, for he had other plans. Taylor and Robert continued the entire time straight into Virginia. They were exhausted, yet terror alone provided motivation to move on.